Hi, I'm Sharon Ferguson with Century 21 Redwood Realty. I fully support TV 18, and as a 14-year resident of Lake of the Woods, I love life around the lake. This is Michael from Red, White, Blue and Brew, your neighborhood shop for beer, wine and cheese. We love TV 18 and life around the lake. Hi, Norm Allen with you on TV 18. Well, we're back on location again to bring you more great stories about our community and the places that we live. Because this is not only about where we live, but it's about how we live. You'll find that in other great shows right here on TV 18, Life Around the Lake. Because after all, the stories, they're all about you. Hi, I'm Melissa. Darlene. We're from Low Hair Studio. I love TV 18. And we love Life Around the Lake. My name is Rebecca Conrad. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Yoga Today. In this class, we're going to be focusing on cultivating ease in our practice. So what does it feel like to you when you feel ease in your body and ease in your thoughts? To me, it feels like there's no pressure to have to do anything right at this moment. There's no need to change myself or others. And that brings me a great sense of ease when I can get to that place. Now in our yoga practice, when we feel ease, we feel a nice spaciousness in our breath, a nice openness, our heart is expanded, our chest is expanded, our belly is expanded, making it much easier to breathe. And then our muscles are much more relaxed. We're not feeling rigid and we're not pushing ourselves so much that we're going beyond our edge. And coming back to the thoughts, ease in our thoughts just makes us feel like everything's going to always work out for us. So even if our life unfolds in ways that we don't expect it to, which is pretty much guaranteed, we can trust that things are always going to work out for us. So when we cultivate this in our yoga practice, we can also take this with us off of the mat. So for today, we're again, we're going to be using our chair. So make sure you have a nice sturdy chair that you can sit in. Um, we'll have, we'll need our yoga mats and you'll also probably want to have your yoga strap and one or two blocks with you today, which of course, if you don't have, you can use other things around the house or order these online for future. So come back in, join me and we'll get started with a nice ease, full breathing technique. So we always want to start our yoga practice with some time centering and quieting our mind. So you can always spend about five minutes just sitting and breathing and being still. And then the breath we're going to start with today to help cultivate ease is to make sure that we're breathing with our diaphragm. So as we become adults, as we grow older, we tend to breathe with our chest. And logically this makes sense because that's where our lungs are and we think we need to breathe into our lungs and lift our shoulders up. But really your chest doesn't move as much as the diaphragm does. So when you inhale, the belly expands as the diaphragm drops. So you really wanna feel your belly expand as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you wanna draw the belly back towards the spine, squeezing all the air out, and not just back towards the spine, but up as well, so that you don't end up kind of rounding the back. So releasing and still keeping the length in your spine. So inhale through the nose. You can even bring your hands to the belly to bring some awareness there. Belly expands. And exhale, release all that breath. The belly draws back to the spine and up. So just keep breathing in this fashion for the next few minutes. And notice the sensations in your body as you breathe in this way, making sure you use the diaphragm. It really encourages relaxation because you can't tense up your breath and it can reduce anxiety and stress. It can even reduce high blood pressure. So go ahead and continue breathing in that way throughout your whole practice. 
really feel it, filling up the belly and taking a nice deep exhale to bring ease into your flow. All right, so we'll get started with warm ups right when we return. Make sure you get all your props together, maybe grab a drink of water, and we'll get started. All right, so now that we've brought some more ease into our breath, we'll also bring it to our warm ups. Just remember with any poses, you want to listen to your breath. As soon as your breath becomes jagged, you need to back off of it and not go so deep. All right, so let's just start with our neck. Go ahead and drop the ear by the left shoulder. And I'm just gonna to try to mirror you guys. So this is my right shoulder, but you guys can drop to the left. And then drop your chin down and just breathe here. Keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, you can come back up through center. Exhale, drop the ear towards the other side and then drop the chin. We'll inhale, come back up. Now we'll start to make a circle with our chin. As you inhale, draw the chin up, but we're not throwing the head back. So find the range of motion that keeps you tension free. Inhaling up, exhaling back down, and then reverse the direction. Inhaling up, exhaling back down. Going more slowly or faster if you need to. And one more. Tuning into the sensations that you feel. And sitting up nice and tall in your chair, press your feet down. Feel grounded. So that you have a place to press against, press the floor away from you. We're gonna take some side stretches. So you can take one hand to the chair or to your hip and lift the opposite arm up, getting length, inhaling, Exhale, release, back down. Inhale, up through the other side. Exhale, back down. And just keep going again at your own pace. And if you can't extend your arm all the way up, oh, go ahead and plant your feet. Make sure you, make sure you feel grounded so that when you're doing these poses in a chair, you can lengthen through your spine. We're gonna side, we're gonna get some stretch in through the side body. So you can take one hand to the chair or to your hip. Inhale, lift the other arm up. Exhale, back down. Inhale up to the other side. Focusing on length more than side bending. And release. Now, if you can't lift your arm all the way up to the sky, it doesn't matter. Take it up as far as you can. And that range of motion may change over time. And back down. And one more time, inhaling up, exhaling back down. And now we'll take both arms, reach them up overhead in a nice big circle, exhale, release, back down. And feel that you're opening up your chest, sitting up tall, using your abdominals. Exhale, back down. This is not just the arms. Lengthening through the spine, Exhale, back down. One more time. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, back down. Now we're gonna use our strap. And if you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a belt, use anything you have around the house. So you're gonna hold on to two different points of your strap. See if you can reach the arms overhead. If you can't, you can take the arms out in front at shoulder height. Otherwise, you can reach them up, and again, for you, your hands may be here and not necessarily completely overhead. Totally okay. Lifting the chest, opening up through the shoulders. And you can change the placement of the hands depending on how it feels to you. So if you want to open up the shoulders even more, you can slide your hands really far apart. This is a nice long strap. And you can keep going until you might be able to take the arms back behind you. They can be bent, that's fine. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale, bring them forward. Inhale, up and back. Remember, you just have to keep sliding your hands further away to make it accessible. And then as your shoulders warm up, you might be able to slide your hands closer together. And 
and just notice the tension here. Usually people feel a great amount of tension. So just adapt. All right, then after a while, it might feel good to get another little side bend and just play with it. I feel like I need to take my hands closer together. Nice side bend, inhale back up, press into the floor with the feet, that'll help. Inhale up, exhale over. And then after a while, it may feel good to twist. So keep those feet fir fir ugh, firmly planted, getting a little tongue tied. Inhale back through center, exhale to the other side. Inhale back through center, and you can do this with the hands at shoulder height, anywhere you can. Using your breath to twist, inhale through center, exhale over to the other side. And we'll come back through center, and then you have that option to fold. So maybe you want to take your hands to the thighs and fold forward, or take the strap down and let the head drop. And then inhale, lengthen the spine, opening through the chest, shoulders down away from the ears. Exhale, hinging forward. Inhale, back up. Now, if you have neck tension, it's probably easiest to keep the neck in line with the spine rather than dropping it all the way down. Inhale, back up, press into the floor. Exhale, back down. Inhale, back up. All right, now let's get into those legs. So you all know how to run in place. So if you wanna keep the feet, the toes down, you can just alternate by lifting up the heels and just kind of run in place to get the, the blood flowing. Now, if you wanna make it more active, of course, pick the feet up, but sit up nice and tall. Don't lean too far back, okay? So we'll just bring some energy into our body here. Remember, you can always keep those toes down. Ah, and then we'll start to open up the hips. You can take one foot out, step it out, step it back in. Inhale, exhale, bring it back in. Inhale, step it out, exhale back in. Inhale, out, exhale back in. One more time. Inhale, exhale, step it in. Inhale. Exhale, step it back in through center. Now start to get into those quads. Different ways to lift the knee. So you can press down through that right foot and lift this other leg here, engaging the quadricep, the top of the thigh, and use your hands for support and switch that way, but engaging that muscle. You can also pick it up without the use of your hands and hold onto the side of the chair. And if you really want to go for more, you can always extend the leg, bring it back down. Inhale, extend, exhale, release. Inhale, extend, exhale, release. Inhale, extend, exhale, release. So one more set. Because we're warming up, so we want to keep moving. Nice. All right. So now let's go ahead and step that left foot out and extend the other leg out to the side. Everybody's range of motion is gonna be different. You can ground the, the inside of the foot down or maybe even the whole sole of the foot. So warrior two, press down through that foot, knee right over the ankle, open the arms out into a T, looking out over your front fingertips and extending the back arm away from the shoulder. And release, bring it back through center chair pose. So holding onto the sides of the chair as if you're going to get up out of the chair or hands on the thighs, press into the feet, lift up, exhale back down. Then we switch sides. So take the other foot out, extend the back leg all the way from the hip. Nice and tall, extend the arms, open up the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Remember, breathing from the diaphragm. So you still want the belly to be able to expand in the pose. And release. Come back through center. Take another chair pose. Release back down. And then airplane the arms. So take the arms back, shoulders away from the ears. And release. Warrior two on this side again. 
Extend through that back leg, shoulder stacked over the hips. Looking out over the front fingertips. And release. Come back to your chair pose. And release, take it to the other side. And release on the exhale. We'll come back through center. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward one more time. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. And inhale to come back to sit. All right, so that completes our warm up. When we come back next, we'll be doing some standing postures. So get all your stuff together and I'll meet you back here. Okay, we're back and we're ready to do some standing postures. So for the next sequence, we're gonna be using our chair, but we're gonna be using the seat of the chair to support us. So I've gone ahead and turned the back of the chair to face away from me. So I'm just facing the seat. And I've got a block handy because depending on your height, you may want it for certain things because you know, this is just one height of a chair. You may be taller, you may need the, the seat to be raised up higher for you. All right, so we're gonna start with a standing posture called side angle pose. So I'm gonna start with my right foot here as close to the chair as I feel comfortable and step the back foot out. And then we're gonna bend this front knee. So stacking the knee over the ankle and extending long through that back leg. Now traditionally, if we're standing without a chair, we would end up taking either the hand or the forearm to the front thigh, but today we'll use the chair to support us. You can take the bottom hand to the seat and take your back hand to your hip and open up the chest, lengthen through the side. So you're hinging at the hip and not from the waist. So we're not rounding to the side. We're gonna keep our neck in line with the spine. And then if this feels good and our breath is telling us that this is a good position for us and we wanna take it deeper, we can take the top arm up to the sky. And just notice your breath here. If you need to modify it all, you can just take the hand back to the hip. If you need to look down at the floor, if that's better for your neck, feel free to do so. Press down through both feet. We'll inhale, we'll come back up. We'll step that back foot in and then we'll switch sides. So just gauging where you need to stand so you can stack your knee over the ankle as you bend the knee, extend through that back leg. Take the front hand to the chair, open up the chest. Hand can be on the hip or reach up towards the sky. Drawing the top shoulder back to help lift the chest. Strengthening through the front leg, extending through that back leg. Notice your breath. Inhale, we can come back up. Step it back in, hold onto your chair as much as you need to. All right, so from here, we're gonna come back into the same position, but we're gonna straighten the front leg this time. And this is where, so we're gonna open up the inner thigh more and the hamstring, but this may be where you need a block if you're tall. So for me especially, I need a little bit more height. So open up the chest, hand can stay on the hip or reach up towards the sky. Front leg is straight, but so that we don't hyperextend, you can get a little bend in that front knee. Again, lifting the chest, press down through the feet as if you're gonna stretch your mat even longer. Neck in line with the spine, looking up to the sky, or just keep it neutral. You can drop that top hand down. Come up, step the back foot forward, and again, switching sides. So this time that front leg is pretty straight, little micro bend, totally fine. And think about that top hip drawing back and that bottom hip drawing in. If you need to modify, take the hand to the hip or reach it up towards the sky. Again, act as if you're stretching the mat even longer. Nice, deep breaths. You can take your top hand down, soften that front knee, step the back foot in. And then while we've got the chair here, let's take our hands to the chair, it could even be the back of the chair, and take a nice downward facing dog. So remember, we wanna extend our spine in downward facing dog, and if keeping the legs straight prevents us from that extension, then bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale, 
Inhale, come forward. And now dolphin pose. Dolphin pose is kind of like downward facing dog, but on our forearms, which is great if you have sensitive wrists. So we can clasp our hands together, line up the elbows right underneath the shoulders, stacking our joints and feeling grounded here through the forearms. And then step your feet back as far as you're comfortable and lengthen through the spine, drawing the belly towards the thighs. Now you maybe really tighten the shoulders, so maybe you start out here with the shoulders right over the elbows. Eventually you're gonna be able to open up to the shoulders. Inhale, extend. Exhale, soften. And we'll come back up. Step your right foot forward. Ground the back heel down at about a 45 degree angle and square the hips. We're not, we're gonna, we don't wanna open up the hips to the side. Square your hips toward the chair. Inhale, lengthen the spine. It may be even good to take one hand to the back of the chair or both hands to the seat. Exhale, hinge forward over that front leg. A little micro bend in that knee keeps us from hyperextending. Inhale, lengthen, spine long here. Exhale, fold forward. And there are, there are many variations of this pose where without a chair, people end up rounding their back. But as we age, we end up over rounding our backs. So we're gonna keep extension in the spine here. And then we can switch sides. So left foot forward, step your right foot back, ground that back heel. So the whole heel is down, both legs are straight. Little micro bend, fine. A big bend is not quite the pose. So you want to straighten both legs so that you're going to feel this through the back of that hamstring. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge forward. Remember one hand or even both hands can stay on the back of the chair. Just depends on your range of motion. Flexibility, strength, it all comes with time. Inhale. Lengthen your spine, and we'll step it back. Shake it out if you need to. It's a lot of hinging forward before we get into our next pose. So now we're gonna take another strengthening pose, kind of like a warrior three, kind of like a balance pose, but again, we're gonna use the chair for support here. So you're gonna line up your heels right underneath your hips, ground down through your right foot. And then start to step your left toes back. This may be where you stay. You can keep a little bend in the knee here in that standing leg, so you're really using that leg and strengthening it. If this feels good, then go ahead and extend through that back heel, flex the foot, and lift it up any amount. Using the inner thigh to help draw the thighs together. Keep pressing through that back heel, engage the abdominals. Finding steadiness in the breath, and then release back down. And hold it only as long as you feel comfortable. It could just be one breath. And then switching sides, taking that back heel back. You can always keep the toes down. Make the pose work for you. Neck in line with the spine. And release back down. And then let's take another downward facing dog. Remember, you can always use the back of your chair or use the seat. Bend the knees as much as you need to. And we'll walk our feet forward. Come all the way back up to stand. Bring the hands to the heart center. <sighs> Beautiful. Now for our next segment, we'll move to our cool down. So go ahead and take, oh, wait, I did it in the middle of it. Oh, well, you'll just, you can leave it and then you can. So go ahead and bring your chair back to your mat and go ahead and take a seat. Make sure you keep your strap handy. We're definitely gonna use that for one of our poses. So we're gonna to start to cool down, wind it down, but we still wanna pay attention to our breath and make sure that we're not pushing ourselves too far in any pose. Let's take the, the hands behind the head and draw the elbows back. Now you may be really tight, so your elbows may be here. That's great. Bring the awareness to it, and eventually you're gonna open the elbows back, opening up the chest, opening up the shoulders, sitting up nice and tall, press down through the feet, and just breathe here. 
Notice how the muscles relax with your breath. Breathing with the diaphragm. Down into the belly. Another shoulder stretch is eagle pose for the arms. So if you haven't had any shoulder replacements or any reason why your doctor would say you can't cross the arms, you can go ahead and take the left, we're gonna to try to mirror you guys, take the left arm over the right and just kind of hook the elbows together and you can bring the backs of the palms to touch. Some people can even keep wrapping and bring the palms together. And kind of squeeze the, the arms together and then lift the elbows up a little bit higher and feel the sensations in the upper back and keep breathing, but you're still sitting up nice and tall. So we're not rounding forward, still nice and tall. Now, if you know that this isn't gonna be in your practice, you can extend the left arm out, take the other hand and create some dynamic strength here where you're drawing the extended arm to the side. Get a little stretch here. Then I'll do that for the other side. Go ahead and switch sides, extend through the arm, press the opposite hand to the outside of the upper arm, and breathe. And of course, if you can cross the arms, you can do that version as well. And release back down. And then we'll take a back bend, we'll open up the chest, kind of contract the back muscles and open up the front of the body. So you can hold onto the sides of your seat hold on to the back, anywhere where you can reach, you may need to scooch forward on the chair and just roll the shoulders back, broaden through the chest. Again, we, it should be easy to breathe in this position. If it's not, you need to lighten it in some way. And even just because we're opening through the chest doesn't mean we're not breathing down into the belly. Ah, go ahead and release the hands, bring the hands back to the thighs, and we'll take a forward fold. So as you exhale, lengthen the spine, fold forward. If you have neck tension, keep the neck in line with the spine. If it's comfortable to keep hinging forward or even take the hands all the way down to the floor or to your block, try that as well. And just surrender into this forward fold, opening up the back body. Take your hands back up to the knees, the thighs. Lengthen up through the spine. Beautiful. Now we're gonna to start to open up the hip flexors. So I'm gonna step my left foot out to the side, knee bent, and I'm gonna drop the opposite knee down. You're probably gonna to have to scooch to the edge of your chair and keep holding on so that you don't fall off. This right away is gonna open up the hip flexors, but if you wanna get into the quad as well, so we did work them today, you can use your strap as an aid to reach your foot for a nice quad stretch. Some people will be able to flex the ankle and reach for the ankle or reach for the top of the foot, but if that's not accessible, use your strap. You can make a little loop, take some coordination, wrap it around, but take your time. Holding on here or holding onto both ends and kind of lifting up from here can flex the ankle and open up through the quad. Keep sending the knee down to the floor. And release. And then you can switch sides. So maybe using, whoop, using that strap. And flexing the ankle just helps to ensure that you're not going to apply any lateral pressure on the knee. And just make sure you keep the knee from kind of swaying out to the side. And actually even better if you can hold your hand here. That will actually bring you more ease. And go ahead and release. We can let go of our strap, our blocks. And then another stretch, we'll go ahead and cross the left ankle over the right, flexing this foot. Now, a lot of people can't bring their foot up here yet. So if you straighten this leg and you're scooched up forward enough on the chair, 
This leg now may be at a lower height and this can be more accessible. So try that, flexing the foot, and then over time, you can start to bend the knee more and get a little bit more into that glute. If you're sitting here nice and tall and you don't feel any sensation in the hip or the glute, go ahead, lengthen the spine, and then hinge forward at the hips rather than the waist, keeping your spine long as always, and you're sure to find some sensation here. Tune into the breath. Maybe about three breaths. And release. And then switch sides. Making sure you get into the pose safely. We're not really pressing down on this knee. We're encouraging this thigh to roll and this hip to, the hip to ex, uh, externally rotate. Beautiful. So stay here for three breaths and go ahead and release. And then from here, just sit back in your chair, get comfortable and find your final relaxation. So turn the palms up to face the sky and spend about five, 10, 15 minutes here with the shoulders relaxed. Thinking about the ease that you've created for yourself and relaxing into it. All right. So thank you for joining me to here today. My name is Rebecca Conrad and I look forward to seeing you soon. Hi, Norm Allen with you here from TV18 Life Around the Lake. All of you who have been donating and helping us with our cause here to keep Project 18 and TV18 going, I want you to know how much we appreciate that. I also want to remind you that any of you who would like to participate in it, you may do so by making your checks out to Flow, Friends of Lake of the Woods, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and you get a tax deduction for all of your donations. You're the reason we're on the air, you're the reason it works, because at TV18 Life Around the Lake, the stories are all about you. This is the crew from the Flower Cottage. We are excited to support TV18. We love life around the lake. Sharon Ferguson with Century 21 Redwood Realty. I fully support TV 18 and as a 14 year resident of Lake of the Woods, I love life around the lake. Hi, we're Diane and Keith Morris from Integrity Automotive. And we support TV 18 and love life around the lake. <laughs>